Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, dear viewers. I welcome you to the Daily Devotional Guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today is Friday, January 13, 2023. Our topic to guide a morning meditation titled, Be Careful. Let us pray. Father, we commit our spirit, soul, and body into your hands. We pray against all manner of waywardness, all manner of unseriousness that has befallen humanity today. Lord, we look unto you. You are the only God who can transform us. We pray that the privileges and opportunities you have given us, we will not abuse them. We will not use them for our own ruins. Help us that in the means of making choices, we will be careful what we say. We will be careful where we go. We will be careful what we eat. We will be careful the people we mingle with. We will be careful of our environment. Help us, O oh Lord, that as we eagerly await the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our lives will be rapturable. Blessed be the name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. People of God, our Bible reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 18. I want to read from verse 16. Please, let's read together. Genesis, chapter 18. I want to read from verse 16. Then the man rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and of all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the word of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous with this, in this, within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that are within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked, Far it be from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now I who I am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there are five less than the fifty righteous. Will you destroy all the city for lack of five? So he said, if I find there 45, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there shall be 40 found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of 40. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I found 30 there. Then he said, indeed now I have taken it upon myself to speak. To the Lord, suppose, it, suppose 20 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. 
Suppose ten should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. People of God, today's topic, very, very instructional. He said, be careful. Yesterday we saw how God's visitation to the house of Abraham brought blessings to the family. As we notice in today's text, the extension of that same visit to Sodom and Gomorrah brought judgment to the city. While Abraham was busy interceding to save the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were busy enjoying the destructive pleasures of sin. Abraham pleaded with God to spare both cities if he could find them ten righteous people in that city. People of God, today the death of Christ is salvation to those who receive him as their Lord and personal Savior. While for those who do not receive him, it is condemnation, as the book of John 3, 18 said it. Be careful how you live. You can make or mar your life based on the choices you make as well as the action you take in life. I want you to know here that God created man as a free moral agent. A free moral agent who was also given the power to make choices. Let me let you know that the life you live is a trust entrusted unto you by the owner. You are not the owner of your life. You boast both sides, heaven and earth. You speak and talk as if nobody can do you anything. Let me let you know, our life is just like the grass that withers away. God is setting a signal and a warning, and he says, in this new year, be careful. What brought destruction to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and especially to the family of Lot, that's where we are so concerned, was because they were not very careful. And that's why God is addressing us today. It's a new year. He wants us to make the best out of the year 2023. And the, one of the sure way by which we can arrive at our promised land with all the blessings of God on our side is to be careful how we live our life. One good thing I must let you know is that you are responsible for your actions. Every action you take today will either make or mar your life, your eternity, or your progress. And I must let you know, there is what we call the perfect will of God and the permissive will of God. When your choice is in line with the perfect will of God, you are sure of making eternity. You are sure of making things right, even as you live your life here on earth. But when your choice is not in line with the perfect will of God, but is in line with the permissive will, be rest assured, what follows is disaster. What follows is ruin. Now, certain things played out in the life of Job and his family from the passage we have just read. The same divine visitation as we saw yesterday that brought blessing to Abraham and Sarah was the same divine visitation that brought judgment upon the land of Sodom and Gomorrah because of carelessness. Now, we want to establish certain facts leading to the role Abraham played to the destruction that came. We saw, number one, a revelation. Now, Abraham was given a revelation of what was about to happen. Why was that possible for Abraham? Because he had a relationship with God. People of God, you cannot go far in life if you have no relationship with God. You will be a man who will not have knowledge and revelation of your time, 
when you are not in tune with God. It takes a man who has encountered God to have a revelation of his time and of the future. Abraham was given revelation about what is ab about to happen to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mind you, Abraham's nephew was in that land. You can see what your presence can bring, the way your presence, your presence as a believer, can even work the salvation of other members of your family. And then we saw again here, there was a reputation. When Abraham was getting revelation because of his personal relationship with God, there was also a reputation given about the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, that they were people who were involved in sodomy, sexual immorality. I want you to know there will always be a reputation about you. What is God saying about you today? That's where the area where God is asking you to be careful. What is God saying about how you talk? What is the reputation of heaven about the association you keep? What is the reputation of heaven about your utterances, about your reaction, about what you eat, about what you wear, about where you go? These things are very important. I say it is, it is, it is, it doesn't matter. Let me let you know what you say does not matter. They are the matters arising before God. Now we saw revelation playing out. Giving Abraham a clear perspective of what was about to happen. Let me let you know, when you have a relationship with God, you will not be killed by any man. You will not die another person's death. And God will always give you a revelation through dreams, through vision, about what is, a, you know, what, what is about to happen. You will never be taken unawares. A man who walks with God, who has the grace of God upon his life, can never die like a man who has no knowledge. And that's one thing you must know today. Abraham had that revelation. And so see what Abraham did again. Number two, we saw a negotiation. Because of the re revelation Abraham had with God, as a result of the relationship, he was able to have an idea about the reputation of heaven concerning Sodom and Gomorrah, where his nephew lived. I want to let you know, when you are in tune with God, what your children do, outside where you stay god will give you a revelation what happens in your business when you are not there god will give you a revelation if there are manipulation going on in the spiritual world against your life against your peace against your your fruitfulness god will give you a revelation one of the things revelation plays out is that it helps you to strategize now we saw a negotiation because of that revelation abraham negotiated with god Abraham negotiated with God. God, if you have 50, will you destroy? God says no. He brought it to 45. He brought it to 40. He brought it to 30. He brought it to 20. Abraham brought it to 10. Abraham was disappointed. May you not be disappointed. Most times, God gives us revelation about what goes on around us. Many of us will be disappointed. Abraham never knew that we are his nephew. With the foundation he gave, uh, he gave Lot, Lot could not evangelize 10 people, not even his children. Not even his children. Because if you can't, the people Abra uh, Lot lost in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the people he came out with, if you count them, they should be more than 10. So which means even in the family of Lot, many people were not saved. People of God, you should be careful how you watch over your home. Are your children saved? Are you working for the salvation of your children? It's a new year. Don't say it does not matter. Children are beginning to behave in an awkward manner and things you don't understand. Don't tell them this is the modern time. Modern time with end time realities. I pray our children will not become casualty of our time in the mighty name of Jesus. So people of God, when you have revelation of God, you will be able to negotiate with God. He negotiated with God with the hope of bringing salvation to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the third one came out, we saw a confrontation. Confrontation, what was that for? The people of Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels of God had to confront them because of their evil mindedness. I pray for you today, as you take extra care about where you go, about people you mingle with, about what you do, how you go about the work of your faith. May God intervene in your situation. And may God, by the grace of God, shut up the mouth of the lion 
who want to devour you. God confronted them. May God confront your enemy. May God confront every sin in your life, in your environment, in your home, in the mighty name of Jesus. Then we saw again a destruction that follows. When God confronts sin and confronts evil, and when there is no repentance, destruction follows. And that is to tell you, people of God, destruction, judgment is coming. Let no man deceive you. And that's why God is calling you today. He said, be careful how you live your life. We are in the electionary period. Now, politicians are coming, canvassing for vote. Be careful what money you are taking, what that money is for. Be careful. We have suffered enough in this country. Be careful who you vote for. Let me let you know, the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria is even worse than what was seen in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we saw how God brought joy, and God is very lenient with us. God loves us so much. Baba, we praise you. You love us so much. Destruction would have long come upon Nigeria. But for the fact that God spared Nigeria up to this day, I know there is a bright future for Nigeria. And I know God is going to turn the fortune of Nigeria around in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, it's important we understand this year. God is asking you to be careful. Be careful how you raise your family. Be careful where you go, the association you keep. He said, be careful. And we can see here, they took God for granted. Lord took God for granted. The, the wife took God for granted. You can imagine, he was careless. He had opportunity, not, the lost wife had opportunity not to have died, but she chose to die. It was a choice. You want to live, it's a choice. You want to die, it's a choice. But I pray you will choose life and not death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we can see what played out here, which is very important. And there are lessons I want us to quickly bring out from this very uh, episode we have just read. Number one is that you cannot hide sin from God. Genesis 18, 20 to 21. You can never hide sin. You cannot paint sin. You cannot decorate sin. You cannot describe sin by beautiful name. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter what coloration. It doesn't matter in what category. Anything that is evil is evil. And so you cannot hide sin from God. Sodom and Gomorrah could not hide sin from God. Let me let you know, sin is a limiting factor. Sin is a killer. It's a mesmerizer. Sin, it kills like an acid. He kills you slowly. He removes you and deprives you of the grace you are supposed to enjoy. When you are into sin, benefits of life are removed. Good things of life are removed. Good health is removed. Blessings that come in business, in the civil service, wherever, they are removed when you go into sin. So you cannot hide sin from God. What we can also learn again from the passage we read is that we should beware of progression of sin in our life. He said it doesn't matter, little, little sin, these are the little forces that spoil the vine. There is always a progression. A woman that wants, or a man that wants to commit sexual immorality, it doesn't just happen overnight. It begins by sending text message, by using ungodly words. You're a married woman, you see a man, you use some very, you know, words that are meant for your husband, for your wife. You begin to use it for another person. Ah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You're already sending an evil signal. And when it begins to bear fruit, you will be looking for where to run to. You will not get where to run to. I pray God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. So beware of the progression of sin in your life. You do it small, small. Say small, small. You are drinking alcohol. One bottle, small, small. One, one, one glass. From one glass to two. You, before you know it, you have grabbed. Be careful how you drink alcohol and what you drink. Be careful because why? Destruction is coming. Judgment is coming. The life you live now is a trust. And wherever there is a responsibility, there is an accountability. You are an accounting officer of your life. You will be called to question. God will call you one day when the time comes and he will say, tell me how you have, and you say, how will he know? God has put many things stand by to monitor whatever you do. God is all knowing. Number three is that there is, the coming judgment is real. 
We can see Sodom and Gomorrah. They never knew judgment was going to come. They thought they could sin and go and go scot free. But you can see, Bible says the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah went straight to heaven. And God decided to come. Let me let you know when your sin, there is, a, there is an expiring date. Don't say nobody knows what you are doing. You are still enjoying the grace. There is an expiring date. It gets to a place when your cup is full, you have nowhere to run to. And I pray. You will not wait for that time to come. Now that you hear the word of God, the grace to repent and turn fully to God, receive it now in the name of Jesus. There is a coming judgment, and that coming judgment is very real. Number four, you cannot suddenly drift into godliness. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Don't say God will become so annoyed with you that he will throw you. With that annoyance, he will throw you past, heaven, uh, past hell into heaven. He said, I don't know where you are getting that teaching from. I don't, you cannot suddenly drift into godliness, into holiness when your life is character. Bible says, by their fruits, we shall know them. What fruits do you bear? What do people know you for? What is your name actually? The name you bear, now is, that, is that actually the name people call you? What is the name you bear in the reality? Be careful what you do. The big eye is watching and one day it will catch up with you number five become an abraham to the lords in your life you saw what abraham did it's a lesson we can bring out abraham became an intercessor how often do you pray for your home be careful how you handle spiritual things how much you take the the the, the, the challenges and problems of your family to your family altar every month you have a family altar Abraham interceded for, for Lord, and that was his intercession, was what made, led to the salvation of Lord and his family, even though his wife eventually disobeyed and became a pillar of salt. So, become an Abraham to Lord in your life. There is somebody God is asking you to intercede for today. There is a member of the family who is behaving waywardly, who is not measuring up. Something is going on somewhere. And God is saying, take out time to pray. Be careful how you listen to the voice of God and what you do with the revelation and message you get from God. Number six, the world is bound to laugh at what is happening. We can see they took it for granted. They, make, they thought it was a laughing stock. Uh, the angels coming, what can they do? They were even trying to have carnal knowledge of the angels of God. The men of Sodom wanted to have carnal knowledge. And so they were thinking it was an, an avenue to laugh and to scorn and to ridicule God. But let me let you know what you meant, what, you, what is meant or prepared to serve as a ridicule into the name and the work of God will turn out to be a boomerang. And these people never knew their destruction was coming. The world was busy laughing at what was happening, but that laughter was soon changed to sorrow. May your joy never be turned to sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. We saw bad influence. Environment is very, very influential. It's important. Where you send your children to, these kind of schools you send them, the environment you send them. And now on holidays, where do you send them to go and spend the holidays? Environment is important. Who are the friends of your children? Who are their peers? Have you taken time to find out who th those boys and those girls are? Have you taken time to find out? Let me let you know, bad relationship will certainly ruin the morals and character of people. That is what also the eighth point says, compromise. We can see, apart from the bad influence that uh, Job, uh, uh, Lot had in, in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was also compromise. You see, when judgment was about to take place, he, he was reluctant because of his financial investment, because of his daughters who are married, because of the friends he has kept. Quite well, he lost so many things. But there was that element of compromise. When you compromise your faith, you become a meat, pepper soup in the hand of the enemy. When you compromise the spiritual standard, things can never be the same again. The day you tell lies and you turn spiritual things around to become for evil,
things can never be the same for you again. That is the more reason why you must not compromise your faith. Your faith is important. Your belief is important. You must hold your faith strong. You must defend, defend your faith. You must stand out for Jesus no matter the challenges you face. Nigeria things are so hard. It's, it's difficult to feed, it's difficult to send children to school, it's difficult, for now you can't even buy. So many things to feed is a problem. Money is not even there. But let me let you know, this is a time God is actually testing the faithfulness of his people. And I, like I said, a new Nigeria will come. A new Nigeria is coming. And I tell you, we are going to share the testimonies together in the mighty name of Jesus. God's mercies alone is what can save. God's mercy is alone. Look at the mercy of God on Lot and his family. It is only God's mercy. So no matter the relationship, no matter whoever has promised you anything, when God's hands is not upon it, I want to let you know it is going nowhere. So it is only God's mercy that can save. Now, we saw again from where we read, taking God for granted, taking the grace of God for granted, taking your blessings for granted. God has blessed you with numerous blessings. You have taken them for granted. Lot was very rich, was very wealthy, but he took so many of those things for granted. He never bothered about the spiritual life of his children. They married that to the extent he said, come, come, let us escape. Yet those people did not respond. I pray we will never take the gift and life of God for granted. May we not take God for granted in our life. The grace to stand firm and do what is expected of us. May God give us that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you today that as you go out, you will be careful. The grace and the power to be, to be careful about the association you keep, about where you go, about what you eat, about the kind of things you wear and what you say with your mouth. May God give you that grace in the mighty name of Jesus because whatever that you like it or not, God is coming to judge whatever we do here on earth. Help us, O oh God, to position ourselves for your divine visitation in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.